The OBD2 came up with PO300, which is a generic code, which means random cylinder misfire. And it then pointed out that it was misfiring on cylinders 1, 3 and 5. Well, that just can't be true. The way it drives, it drives smooth as silk, so that's not right. P1313, I spent ages and ages trying to find this code. It's not a Ford code. Uh, it is a Jaguar code, but it's hidden away. And that says misfire rate, catalyst damage, bank 1. So that is um, to do with the O2 sensor. We also get P1646. And that's the linear O2 sensor control chip bank 1. And P111, P1111, 1111. That says the CAT system fault. I sent off and bought a new oxygen sensor. And this is what's come from eBay. This was £18.95. I'm slightly suspicious of eBay products, but there are literally hundreds of vendors selling these. Um, a Bosch one is 55 quid. A Denso one is 100 quid. So I've gone with the cheap option. Uh, unfortunately, this car is really old now, and it's probably not worth spending money on premium parts. I've also got this special socket. Is I've had this for eight years. You can see it's a bit rusty, and it's so specially designed for that to sit inside it. One of the lessons I've learnt doing this job is that the sensors have different connectors. So the one that I've just fitted is the wrong one. Um, I just ordered an oxygen sensor from eBay, not realising that these things are actually handed. And the way to tell is if you look in this fitting, on this side there's two little cutouts. On the one that I've just fitted, those two little cutouts are on the other side. So you can't connect the electrics up. So it's well worth knowing that. The other thing is that this connector is a different colour to the original one. It's dark grey, whereas the original one is light grey. That put me off, but that's because this is a pattern part. So putting these two connectors together, you can see that they are handed. And the one that I've already fitted to the car is the wrong one. So I'm going to have to do it again. The other noticeable difference is the size of the holes. This is the one that I'm changing. This is the correct one with the small holes. The one with the big holes goes in the front of the engine. These should be the only tools that I need to do the job, which is a socket with a long handle, a smaller um, socket wrench so I can get in there. Both of these have got tilting heads, which are helpful. And the special socket for taking the oxygen sensor off without um, snagging the wire. Um, but what I found is you need extreme heat to actually get the thing out. And I was in B&Q the other day and I found this Microtech torch, which apparently goes up to 1,350 degrees. So I bought that, it was quite expensive, it was 35 quid. But the thing is you have to have a really small torch in order to get down into the uh, bay and get onto the actual thing that you need to heat up. Most torches, they are like this, and then they have a big canister on the bottom, so they're not really much use. So I'm hoping this is going to do the job. First problem, the butane that they supply, go system, go system, go system. That butane canister does not have an adapter that will fit this torch. Now fortunately, I've got a smaller gas lighter refiller that will fit that torch. So that was a waste of six quid. We can put it in one of our camping gaff stoves, I suppose. So to light this up, you click that down and you prick it. Click it down, press it and hold it by the grip. And that's a lovely small, really hot flame. The heat shield has actually fallen off and I've managed to get a spanner onto the sensor. Now I think if I can heat that up now, with the spanner in place, I should be able to undo it. The spanner is the bright shiny bit that you can just see the end of on the uh, left hand side.
I've managed to get the old sensor out, uh, but it was really difficult and it's taken me nearly an hour and a half. So what I actually did was, I had to saw off the end of the stud, the exhaust stud, which is down there. I sawed off the end of the exhaust stud so that I could turn the spanner more than a quarter of a turn because it was in the way. That took me nearly 20 minutes with a pad saw to cut that off. It's extraordinarily hard. I tried to cut off the actual sensor but that's got some sort of ceramic inside it and it blunted the blades. I ran the engine for five minutes to heat up the exhaust um, because I realised I wasn't going to have to touch it and then I brought a spanner in down through the top down through there, down onto the sensor, and I was just about enough to get enough on it to move it a quarter of a turn. And you have to put it one way and then turn the spanner around and then do it the other way and then put the spanner in and then turn it around. What I also found was it was really good to have a much shorter spanner. So I cut up this cheap Chinese one and by doing that and keep doing it and keep doing it, I finally got the thing to drop out. The next thing is to disconnect it and you have to push this tag here at the back you have to push that down really hard and I actually had to use an allen key and at the same time you can then pull that out I can't actually get this off the bracket I think I'm just going to have to pull it off with a large pair of pliers so this boxy thing really didn't want to come off so I hacked it with a pad saw and then pulled it off with some old grips fortunately obviously I don't need this again I've clipped on the new connector so it doesn't fall down into the car. Now I need to thread it down through the heat shield and hopefully screw it back into place. Before I did that I coated it with a shed load of copperies in the hope that it will make it easier to go back in.